I think it's a good time to be in here. I'm looking out the window and it is really blown out there. Okay. I think we're going to get started. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the second plenary session. My name is Mary Kay Bredesen. I am the Executive Director for a Center of Excellence for Aerospace and Advanced Manufacturing out of Washington State. Our state uh, funds 10 centers of excellence. We are liaisons between our industry partners and our 34 community and technical colleges. I'm excited to moderate this particular panel because if you look at our theme, Innovations to Build Tomorrow's Workforce, you have to think about our industry partners and education working hand in hand. And I promise you that this panel will talk to you and it exemplifies the partnership collaboration uh, with industry and community and technical colleges, not in just one state not in just one region, but all across the United States. How our state got involved with Amtech Kentucky, which you're going to hear about in a minute, the National Center of Excellence for Advanced Automotive Manufacturing, was from our industry partner, Boeing, up in Washington. They're ramping up deliveries, and they're using the automotive uh, way of doing business, how they ramped up in the South using automation, robotics, and we did not want to have to completely start all over again developing curriculum. It was actually Boeing that found Amtech Kentucky and uh, brought up Dr. Catherine Manley. I knew her as Dr. Kitty, who actually developed uh, a curriculum, did a day come for the automotive industry, and I'm not going to steal your thunder, but it's important that you realize how we got involved. And 170 tasks were developed. Boeing somehow got wind of this, took myself and about, I would say, 10, yeah, 10 uh, Boeing high-level people down to visit Amtec and their partner, uh, Toyota in the early spring of last year. And then we decided to see it in practice in uh, uh, San Antonio at the Alamo Colleges. And this time we took our workforce deans and more industry partners to see it in uh, action. So we decided to join this collaboration because of course we're listening to what industry needs are. And this is no easy task. Uh, we've really appreciated the guidance and the uh, work that has already been done by Amtech Kentucky and their collaboration. So with no further ado, I'd like to tell, talk, tell you who's going to be speaking. First, we're going to hear from Deneen Tomlin, Amtech Executive Director for the National Science Foundation uh, Principal Investigator. Next, we'll hear from Mary Batch, Toyota Motor Manufacturing Texas, Toyota, the AMT model. Followed by Gene Bowman, Alamo Area Academies, looking at the K through 12, 10 through 12 connection. Then followed by Beverly Hildebrand, Car Cam, Alabama, which is another NSF uh, funded project. And then Dr. Lynn Kreider and Kevin Smith, uh, Dr. Lynn Kreider is Tennessee College of Applied Technology, and Kevin Smith is with Nissan. So right now, please help me welcome them as they decide to give their uh, little spiel here on Amtech. Denine, we're going to start with you. Yes, thank you. Uh, we'll have opportunity for some more Q&A uh, towards the end of this, but we just want to give you a quick overview of what every, how every region is approaching the implementation of AMTEC. But before I do that, I d would like to just give you an, uh, a heads up on what we do as a National Science Foundation Center of Excellence. We are responsible 
uh, to our industry partners in helping to develop advanced mechatronics technicians. Uh, these are the folks that actually sit on our board and guide and advise me and uh, the rest of our colleges on what we will and won't teach within, our, within uh, the competency-based modularized curriculum. Here is an overview of uh, some states where we have various levels of implementation. We originally began with about five to six community colleges amongst our states, and here is how we blossomed over the past few years, completely 100% financed by the National Science Foundation, ATE. Okay, I don't think the slides are progressing. There we go. There we go. Here are our center's goals with Amtec II, second round of uh, ATE funding. Our goals are very broad but very detailed. We are, we've already set out our new Delphi to revalidate our occupational skills. We're also researching best practices and career pathway models, conducting research. We're actually helping our various college partners and the K-12 through system implement career pathway models. Uh, aligned to the competencies that have already been developed and, and uh, validated by our industry partners. We're also responsible for expanding uh, the model and for the professional development of our technical instructors throughout the community colleges. We also have developed several areas for assessment, uh, for general mechatronics assessment, validated by industry, in addition to developing diagnostic assessments, and then our material actually covers pre and post assessment as uh, told to us by our industry. They didn't want us wasting time on things that uh, are not relevant within the industry. So within our competency-based modules, there are pre and post assessments for credit for prior knowledge. So that leaves us with the Amtec product line, if you will. Uh, competency-based modularized curriculum, our general mechatronics assessments, our diagnostic assessments. We have a piece of equipment that is our advanced instructional manufacturing simulator. We have developed an employer employment portal where all of our college partner students, graduating students, can contact our employers and apply for jobs. We've disseminated and we continue to develop career pathways research. We also have a national Delphi survey model that can be used by your industry partners. And we also offer professional technical development for our college instructors. We couldn't have done any of this without our industry partners. The challenges against and the accusations against us at the community college level were that we have never been able to reach the technical competency level that they need for their advanced technicians, they're multi-skilled technicians. And so uh, the value of what we've done within Amtec is I listen to our, we listen to our industry partners. Our colleges give a lot of input, are very valuable. But when it comes to decision of what will and will not be included within our materials and what will and won't be assessed, it's all industry's input that have developed consensus. So. With that, I would like to turn the presenta presentation over to uh, one of my partners back in Texas, Ms. Mary Batch from Toyota Motor Manufacturing, Texas. And I'm going to zip on through this real quick. There we go. Thank you, Deneen. Can everybody hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. What I want to do is, uh, I only have a few slides here to just kind of explain our model that we have in, in San Antonio, Texas. So for us, we have a, uh, a definite problem when it comes to a skilled workforce and being able to find the, the qualified candidates in order to be able to keep our equipment and production running smoothly at our plant. What you're seeing here is what our career path is. And we really do start at the high school level and introducing young uh, youth into what manufacturing is and then working them all the way through to where they can actually become a skilled team member eventually. And this is the current model that we're using. One of the reasons why we're doing this is we're using a backyard strategy simply because we cannot find the talent. We have a huge gap where 
individuals quit going to vocational technical schools or career and technology type of uh, training and they started going and gravitating towards the four-year uh, degree plans and we have a huge gap when it comes to that skill level. They're just not there anymore. So we're having an aging workforce that's going to be leaving us within the next 10 years and we have to find a way to be proactive and to being able to fill this gap and fill these roles and slots that we have within our organization. This is a slide of our high school program. Every summer we'll bring in 12 high school students between their 11th and 12th uh, grades. And they're part of the Alamo Academies and you'll be able to hear about that here in just a few minutes. But that very first week that they're with us, they're actually learning life essential skills, how to communicate, how to have initiative, be able to ask good questions and stuff. They're there not to work, but to learn. So that's an important aspect to this, is that they're there to learn. And then they'll start rotating into the different areas within the organization, with on the shop floor, and there they're learning a lot of the skills that they learned, that they were introducing to the academies, and much more after that. But they're learning everything that we ex expect a multi-skilled technician to be able to do for us. And in the very last eighth week, they're actually going to report out and present out to our senior leadership. So the whole time they're writing in a journal and they're uh, talking and speaking about their experience and then what their next steps are and what they're planning on doing with their career later on. Again, they're completely supervised and they're a learner in that type of environment. But they're actually, as you can see in this photo here, they're actually out on the floor and they're actually engaging with our maintenance team members there. This is a, a quick example of what our two-year working scholarship is. So they start off in the academies, but what we did do is that we went in there and we wanted to create a program that was a lot more robust and everything because we found that there was a lot of good talent here and a lot of young people that really had a lot a keen interest in the manufacturing and wanted to get into this. So what we did is we put together a two-year working scholarship, is what we call it, and they're actually in an applied manufacturing technology associate applied science degree. They're also learning what we call manufacturing core exercises that are very specific to manufacturing. So this is embedded within their, their learning. But also too what's unique about this that they're in their, their college program uh, two full days a week. So they're taking a full load and they're taking up to four to five courses per semester, five semesters straight, and that includes the summer. And then they're at the plant three days a week and what they're learning in the classroom, they're applying on the plant floor. So they're getting real world experience. At the end of the program, they'll actually have that two years associate's degree and they'll also have two years of working experience with a global company. And there's not too many, you know, uh, college graduates can actually say that. And actually being able to have an opportunity to work two years in the career that their degree is actually in. This is just a, a, a way that actually works where it shows they're at the plant for two days a week, three days a week, and then the classroom for two days a week. Okay. Thank you. Great. That's it. So my next uh, person is Gene Bowman. He is part of the Alamo Academies. All right. Does this one work? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Who saw Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid? Anybody see that movie? So do you remember when Sundance was interviewing for the job and he was shooting his gun at the hat on the ground and he missed it all the time because he was standing still? That's me. I'm probably better if I'm moving. So if I mess up, it's because I'm sitting still. And we could just go back back to my starting point. I'm giving you a little prelude before I get my slides ready. But anyway, one other caveat. I'm a retired Air Force pilot. This adventure in academia is my second career in life. I leave it at that. How's that? It's an interesting career, I'll tell you. So if I don't say it just right, it's because I never said it right. But anyway, so here's the Alamo Academies, and I'm excited to follow Mary, and we, we changed the slides around because we're an industry-driven program, and so it only made sense that I follow my industry partner. So I hope this goes. So here's the, what the Academies are. 
It is your workforce talent pipeline. And I would tell you, if you just copy everything on these slides, you can take it back to your community, and it will solve your workforce talent pipeline problems. <laughs> That's not hyperbole. It's been working for 15 years in the community of San Antonio very well with partners like Lockheed and Toyota and Boeing and HEB, and I can go on and on and on, whole cat, a lot of them. So it does work. And as Mary just pointed out, it is helping feed the Toyota pipeline. So here's what this leading program solves. It's very simple. It's what everybody's been trying to solve is that skills gap. And you see we have a lot, of, I mean, we have, in San Antonio we have low unemployment rate. But that's not always the problem. You've got to have people with the skill sets that your companies like Toyota or Lockheed or Boeing need to match up. And so that helps really solve the skills gap. But in Lockheed back in 1999, and it came codified in 2001, they needed to replace the retiring workforce when they took over the maintenance and repair operations of the C-5 aircraft in San Antonio, Texas. They wanted to transfer the knowledge and skill experience for all the people they hired that was kind of looking like me, retired. So they developed this pipeline, which what we have here, as soon as we go there, you go to the next slide, they created this STEM-based partnership. Now they did this back in 2001, and in 2001, STEM wasn't even a word yet. <laughs> it wasn't even a twinkle in anybody's eye. And now that's all everybody talks about. Back in 2001, this is when the program started, the contextual experiential learning experience, apprenticeships, whatever you want to call it, it works, okay? And it's been working for a long time, but it was a great partnership with pretty much all the players in our community. There was no additional brick and mortar spent to do this program. You partner with your local community college. You usually have outstanding facilities that have been paid by the taxpayers. You have industry at the table driving the program, all your school districts and your local community government. It works very, very well. And the key thing is the red down there where you're marrying industry workforce and economic development for a STEM-based high school to career pipeline. And like I said, we got 15 years of metrics showing how this has been working. Very simple, industry demand, collaborative, dual credit. I didn't know what dual credit was when I was in high school. We didn't have such thing. You either were in high school or you went to college, you did both. But now they got a fancy name, they call it dual credit. But we do a dual credit in the career and technical education field, not just core academic, but the contextual, the old shop courses you might think about when we were in high school, but this is shop courses on steroids at college level at industry standards, and it does work. It's a dual credit program of studies, getting a college diploma, a level one certificate, halfway toward an associate applied science degree, recognized industry certificates embedded into the curriculum. It can be done, and it can be done at high school level because you have industry at the table working with the local community colleges making it happen. The glass is always, always half full. It's just how you look at it. And I look at it, it's always half full. It's like when I hit my shot, the nine iron to the green, I'm always going to be within 10 feet of the pin. Some golfers out there, I'm glad you got that. <laughs> because if I was, I wouldn't be here, I'd be on the tour. But anyway, we have stackable credentials. We didn't create that. That was demanded by industry. They wanted these young men and women coming into this career and technical education career fields. They didn't want them to waste college credits. So they wanted to be able to work toward a level one certificate, an associate, an undergraduate. So it was very important they didn't have too many wasted hours in the curriculum. And the key only is not only having industry at the table, but we have comprehensive to student support. We love these kids to death. We don't do the homework, but we're there to help guide them through their college experience while they're coming to the program. So here's the whole program in a nutshell. Over 30 plus college hours in the program of studies at no cost to the students. The Alamo Colleges and the trustees, they waive the tuition and fees for those college hours. The kids come, they're bused to the college campus two and a half hours every day, 7.30 to 10. The colleges gets 100% of their average daily attendance. They're making, I mean, the high schools get their money from the state so they can afford to buy the books and the transportation. The industry pays for that summer internship, eight weeks, 320 contact hours, 40 hours a week, applying what they've been learning in that career field with the industry partners on a day-to-day -day basis. As Mary pointed out, they have mentors there, they got a training plan, they get a college grade for it, and they pay them. Energy partners get the shop 
before they buy that product when it graduates. They get to see it firsthand. They help mentor. If there's any bad mistakes, it's what industry taught them because they get to help guide these young men and women. So these are sophomores coming into a program their junior and senior year that have basically earned a $9,000 scholarship when you add all of this up. So here's some brief timeline participants how it works. Here is how it works. And do not ever leave goal without accomplishing this. First step is an industry demand need. This is not your normal academic program where you're just pushing people out the door, you pat them on the back and you say good luck. This is where you're pulling them to an industry man career field, helping to guide them to a potential job. There's no guaranteed job at the end of the pipeline, but what you see from Toyota, Lockheed and Boeing, they're hiring these kids before they even graduate from high school, and they're definitely talking to them. But there's the process. You get the needs, you get a collaborative partnership, you create the program, and down there in the bottom, I stole this from Toyota, you're continuously improving the model. And when you work with industry, you don't have to worry about getting feedback. They will tell you yeah. immediately. Right, Mary? That's absolutely. absolutely, that's right. All the time. All the time. Here's some of our partners. This is what makes it happen. You got well, all the school districts in the San Antonio region participate. We got over 100 industry partners. There was a Lockheed Martin experience. It was so good for them, they exclusively hired these kids to become their jet engine mechanics. Think of the cost benefit to their overhead. They knew what they were getting. They weren't wasting hiring people. I'll get, you know, interview 60, maybe hire one, and they leave in six months. No, these kids are came. They're loyal to the company. Their retention was over 90%, an absolutely good program. Toyota experience, you heard a little bit about Mary helping them to meet their multi-skilled technician need. So here's what Toyota is basically doing, like all our other companies. They're taking the best kids that want to get in these careers, they're bringing them to Toyota, giving them exposure and a paid internship, and then they're giving them a scholarship toward their advanced manufacturing technician program. Here's some of the cream of the crop in San Antonio that they're basically taking into their plant and turning into that multi-skilled technician. As I said, this works. I'd just steal it if I was you. Here's some of the results. In San Antonio today, we are a majority minority city. We are what the next America generation is going to look like today. So we have 78% of our students are minority. Sadly, 86% of them are economically disadvantaged. We've got a lot of inner city kids. Some of our kids during their summer internship, that is their family income. But when they get hired out of high school, go work for these great companies, Man, they are leading the example. They're becoming wonderful taxpayers, and they're breaking that barrier that might be in their particular community or culture or whatever it could be. A lot of graduates, they all graduate from high school. They have to because if you don't pass in our program, this is not a right that you earn. You have to earn this, so you've got to pass the college grades to stay in our program. So they do the graduate. All the kids that finish graduate from high school. But what I like is we graduate kids 22 times above the level one certificate for the state of Texas. Now, 11